today, eight players have their sights set on winning this beautiful trophy. It's the first major of the year. Let's meet our eight finalists. Our tournament leader, he's won seven titles, including two majors, Jason Couch. In the number two position, 17 career titles. He won earlier on the winter tour, Norm Duke. Our third seeded qualifier, a six-time titleist from San Diego, Jess Stayrook. In the number four spot, former PBA Rookie of the Year from Wichita, Kansas, Chris Barnes. Qualifying fifth, three PBA titles, last year's Sportsmanship Award winner, Justin Romick. In our opening three-player shootout, Dale Traber from Cedarburg, Wisconsin, who always bowls well here in Toledo, will take on seventh seed, Roger Bowker, holder of five national championships. And our final qualifier, he got in by just a single pin from Northridge, California, Eric Forkel. We're at Southwick Lanes in the Glass City, Toledo, Ohio, for this prestigious event. It's the PBA National Championship. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Ferguson, along with my broadcast partner, PBA Hall of Famer, Marshall Holman. Marshall, finals field of eight, but you have to go right to the top. A gentleman who knows how to win from that top spot. Well, you're absolutely right, Phil. Jason Couch has won seven titles on the PBA Tour. Now, five of them have come with him being the number one qualifier. He's in that seed right now. He knows how to win. He knows how to be enthusiastic and get those 10 frames done. He's also going for a second major in a row. He won last year's Brunswick World Tournament of Champions. So he is certainly on a roll. And we'll have to wait for Jason Couch as our top-seeded player this afternoon. Marshall, interesting uh, first match here. Dale Traver doesn't bowl a whole lot, but when he does, he's awfully good. You know, it makes me wonder how come he doesn't bowl on a more permanent basis out here. He's certainly a very talented player, doesn't throw a lot of hook, but keeps the ball in play. Great start for the part-time player. High flush in the pocket. The Traver bowled just one tournament last year in Toledo, and he says he plans on just bowling one this year. Now look at Roger Bowker. Last win came in Austin. A strike for Bowker to open up the match. We're seeing some players that go a little bit straighter this week. Well, even the guys that hooked the ball this week, Phil, throw the ball, are throwing it very straight, and that's a product of the way the lanes are done. The lane condition 50 feet long, so you're not seeing a lot of hook as we take a look at the lefty, Eric Forkel. Gary. Yes. And what I thought was going to be a low-scoring battle has started out with all strikes, Bill. <laughs> Demanding lane condition this week. To cash, it took just uh, an average of 205. Second frame. <laughs> Uh, you can see as he released that ball, he, did, he didn't like it. He got it a little bit inside his target. As he walked back, he was sort of nodding. He expected the half 10. 10 pin not been able to be knocked out by the six. Traber, a good spare shooter. Shouldn't have any problem with the 10. Yeah, you're right. Strike spare for Traber to start this opening match. Bowker uh, just balancing it with the one hand, Marshall. Left lane hooking a little more, Phil. And, and Bowker developed that style a few years ago. It worked for him. It keeps him comfortable. Enables him to get up and make the good shots. For the amateur bowler, would you recommend it? No, I think I, I would recommend using both hands to stabilize the ball. Eric Forkel, second frame. Coming up high. Leaving the six pin. Giving Bowker a 10-pin lead over Forkel and Traber. That was close. Forkel barely got in by one pin. Yeah, he just, and he knocked out Parker Bone the third. He was one pin down with one game to go. 
End up making it by one. <laughs> Having no problem with the six pin conversion. Right now, Roger Barker with a double, and he has the early advantage, leading by 10 over Traber and Forkel. Here at Southwick Lanes. Yeah, that's all the flat 10 in the second frame by Traber, and now we see the ringing 10. A little better shot than the previous one. He liked it. Yeah, he thought that would strike, but six pin went around the bottom of the 10, didn't knock it down. Bowker with five national titles, 24 regional wins. Looked like Bowker got a little fast, didn't get to the line quite the way he wanted to. Ball was left off of his hand, leaving just the four, taking that lead down to nine pins. Traber going for the spare. <laughs> Players, uh, when they get a little fast out here, some th things can happen. Not, yeah. not a lot of them good. No, no, you got to keep your footwork a little bit slower as Bowker makes the four pin. You know, some people have fast footwork, but, you know, even when I was bowling, my, my feet were very, very quick, but I needed to, needed to maintain, you know, a stable pace. Forkel now up in the third frame. Strike spare. And just the ten. Now, ball coming in light, Phil. And with not enough drive going to the right to knock down the 10 pin. Five and the six, the last two to fall. Forkel. Third frame, wanted to wish his niece, Megan, happy birthday. She's four. Picks up the spare. Right now, it's Roger Bowker out in front here in the PBA National Championship from Southwick Lanes in Toledo. A little bit uh, chilly outside in Toledo, but uh, warm inside. And Dale Traber doesn't bowl a lot on the national tour, but he's thrown three quality shots. Just having trouble with Kerry right now, Phil. Two 10 pins in a row. He's not, you know, he throws the ball, looks good off his hand. The ball hits the pocket, leaves a tenth, and then he nods his head as if, as if to say, wasn't a good shot. Fourth frame. And another one. Boy, it's just a, it's a broken record. Ringing ten pin for Bowker. Like they're saying, hey, Eric, we're waiting for you. Reference to Mr. Forkel. Trader uh, switching balls for that 10 pins fair. But as straight as he throws the ball on his strike shot, he still doesn't want any friction going for the spare, so he goes for a ball with less friction, just like Bowker did. Eric Corco with a strike and two spares up in the fourth frame. Tight match. This is the PBA National Championship, the first major of the year. came in light. Still just nine pins down, but finds himself in a situation where he has a chance. Well, now let's take a look at what's in the bag, and it's for Dale Traver. It's the strike ball is a Danger Zone Pro HPH. The strong, proactive cover stock. The pin is three inches from the axis point with an extra hole that's a half an inch, excuse me, inch and a half past the axis point. This ball is really good with the heavy oil in the middle of the lane. The way I get the ball to rev up sooner for an earlier change of direction and certainly worked well there. Didn't even have to go to a spare ball. So Traber, strike in the fifth. He has 78 through four. And Bowker has hammered the pocket. Hold it a little bit. Will it go? I think so. Oh! oh Don't have your pins, Marshall. Marshall. Watch the four pin, third from the left. It's nudged pretty good. Does not quite have enough angle to tilt it over. Bowker for the spare. They runs with four pins, a little bit heavier. Well, they're three pounds, 10 ounces. Uh, most of the pins uh, in your local bowling centers will be 
three sixes and three sevens, so tougher to knock down. Forkel up in the fifth, trying to make it a double. And there's a corner pin, the seven pin for Forkel. So you've seen the right-handers leaving a lot of ten pins. Now, Forkel on his side of the lane leaving the seven. And that's because the ball is not driving into the pocket as you would normally see it on Pro Bowlers Tour mm -hmm. or, in a, or in a local center. The back ends are tight. I've seen a lot of corner pins and folks back home saying, why don't the players move a little bit? Well, they are moving. in the fifth frame. Bowker now, 87 through four. He leads by nine over Traber. Fork, Forkel trails by just eight. Traber working on a strike for the lead. Solid 10. The pocket doesn't seem to be a problem today, Phil, but boy, trying to knock all 10 down. Well, the PBA National Championship, Don Carter won the first event in 1960. Earl Anthony won this six times. Come on, baby! Damn it, crickets. From time to time, you'll hear a little color commentary from Roger Bowker. He thought he had that one. Yeah! Traber no problem with the spare. Our defending champion, Tim Chris. Stoic look. Bowker as he picks up the spare. So we are on the sixth frame. Eric Forkel working on a spare. Bowker still leads by seven over Traber. I feel after the first frame, we think we're going to just keep striking forever and fix it. Traber in the seventh, trailing by seven, but he's been all around the pocket. Yeah! He's got a hurry. Just does trip out the four pin. That ball finished a little bit better than the, the previous shots. Hooked into the pocket harder than I thought it was going to, and a very emphatic response from Traber. Look up, look up. There you go. Like that one. Bowker's ball coming in light. Just enough to knock the just enough to hit the five pin. A satisfied response from Roger Bowker. Oracle now can make it a double if he gets his strike in the ring. That was a beautiful shot. Bad off his hand. Opportunity to take the lead and an air ball, but easy to do. If you leak the ball a little bit to the left for the right for the left handers or right for the right handers, it doesn't come back. He got it to finish again, Marshall. So Traver coming through. He's got a double. And now he takes the lead. He's got to be kicking himself right now at the way he threw that first shot. Forkel finished eighth earlier this year, the Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic, and now Roger Bowker. First telecast this year, finished third twice last year. Bowker now with a double. So Bowker and Traber. So Bowker had lost the lead, and now he just regained it with that strike in the eighth frame. And Forkel, with a strike here, get right back in it. Forkel working at a 199 pace. <laughs> Through the nose and leaves the four and the seven. Well, they just threw it out in the previous frame, and now comes back a little high. Well, you, and that happens. You know, it's just like you make the you make the adjustment for the wrong lane. He threw, threw it to the, to the left, the previous frame, wanted to make sure he got the ball up the pocket, 
in this one and just went right through the heart. You know, I watched Aaron throw a lot this week, and every time he shot that spare, it looked like he was going to he was going to miss it. Just ball sliding to the left further than he thought it was going to. We take a look at our scoreboard. Forkel down by 19. Traber trails by eight. Traber now up in the ninth frame. Working on a strike and take the lead. Making quality shots, not bowling like a part-time player right now. Bowker in the ninth, working on a double. Oh. You heard him ask for that ball to hit, and it didn't. The eight and the ten. What happens on that shot? Well, you'll watch the ball roll down the lane. It deflects to the right. Six pin does not come out, take care of the 10 pin. The eight pin stands as well. And right now, not looking good for Forkel or Bowker. Very similar reaction for Forkel. <laughs> well, that ball hit pretty hard. Bowker just takes nine and. Right now, his best that he can do is 211 if he were to strike out. Traber working at a 218 pace. Forkel needs to make this, then strike out in the 10th frame, and he'd still need to have help. And uh, you can you, you can make this one. Certainly. Get it. Yeah. Just like that. Great spare, great stick conversion. Carrera Forkel. Just want to nudge the five pin, knock it over into the seven, no problem. That wasn't that tough. Traber now in the tenth frame. First tournament of the year. I tell you, he never ceases to amaze me. He does this each year for his one tournament. Ten pin for Bowker, but totally amazing. He can't believe that he couldn't carry better. What's amazing is that Dale Traber, a part-time player, can come out here and bowl against the best players on the planet and beat them. Not able to knock out the five pin. So Dale Traber now moves on to the second match. And Traber will take on Chris Barnes and Justin Rullick. The winner of today's PBA National Championship will receive the Eddie Elias Trophy in remembrance of the tour's late founder. Elias formed the PBA Tour in 1958. Drawing from his experience as a lawyer and entrepreneur in the world of television and event promotion, Elias turned the PBA Tour into one of the world's most successful sports organizations. He played a key role in obtaining television rights for the PBA Tour, and it was through this that the Tour became a staple in the American sports culture. Elias also enjoyed success as an agent in the world of entertainment and sports marketing. His list of clients included Marlo Thomas, Phil Donahue, Chichi Rodriguez, and Fuzzy Zeller. But the PBA Tour was Elias' first love. Until his death in 1998, Elias always referred to the PBA players as his boys. Today, they play for the trophy that honors his name. We're at Southwick Lanes here in Toledo. It is the PBA National Championship. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Ferguson, along with my broadcast partner, PBA Hall of Famer. He's won 22 titles, a couple of majors mixed in, Marshall Holman. And Marshall, when you take a look at this major championship, you look at the top two players, awfully strong. Well, you're absolutely right, Phil. And, you know, Norm Duke, the number two seeded player, he really led the tournament throughout the, the entire last day until the last couple of frames when Jason Couch went ahead of him. But Duke's a 17-time PBA champion. And not only is he a great player, but the, certainly the versatility enables him to combat all conditions. 
Now, well, earlier we talked about Jason Couch and the fact that he has won seven times, five times for the number one seed. He is certainly ready, although he's going to have to wait a couple of games before he gets his chance to win his second major in a row. Phil, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. The first major of the year. Dale Traber. Kind of a surprise in the opening match. Bulls one or two tournaments a year. However, he did tell me last night, should he win here today, he will bowl in the Tournament of Champions, which he will qualify for. Traber, opening shot. And just the four pin. Now motioning for the ball to go to the right. He's waving at it, but once I guess once you throw it, it's uh, it's gone. It's nope. gone, Dale, but uh, it's going to be a four pin. Trying to direct traffic. Doesn't always work. Barnes, 29, came out on the Pro Tour a little bit later. But certainly has made his mark early, Marshall. Well, he has. 2-4-5 for Barnes. Asking for the ball to hook, but on this condition, not a lot of hooking back. It's probably a little unrealistic to get three reds on it. For Barnes, great start here in the year 2006 event for him. Previous five, fifth, seventh, fourth, eleventh, eleventh. <laughs> Today the television show is switching balls. Good conversion and good tip for all the people watching. You don't need power to make spares. Use the ball with less friction. Hooking it a little bit more than the couple of players that are participating here in match two. Cardi Finkbonner, the mayor of Toledo. And boy, this is for a number of years, the 20th year we've been in Toledo, the PBA National Championship. Great yeah. Traver likes it. There's the seven pin, the last to go. Traver with a spare and strike. And a smile. <laughs> Let's take a look at the pin action for Dale Traber. Five pin, moving left. And just knocking down the seven. That'll make you smile. Ah. Chris Barnes, second frame. A couple of national titles, two regional championships. <laughs> Different equipment. One ball for the left lane. It hooks a lot more. One ball for the right. The amateur player out there saying, that's tough enough to bowl with one ball on. Two lays. Now to switch equipment. Romick up in the second frame. Fortunate for Romick that he just left the 6-10. Looked like he was distracted a little bit. Not sure what it was, but he'll have to come back and make that. Traber finished second in the 94 PBA National Championship when he lost to his brother David in the title match 196 to 197. Yeah. It's tough losing a match, but even tougher when you lose to your brother. It'd be, it'd be real tough for me. I don't have a brother. <laughs> well, Romick makes the spare, and you know, for Traber, he certainly seems to be comfortable. He's got the game behind him under his belt. I mistakenly said earlier that Barnes was using a ball for the left lane and one for the right. He's using the same ball. Just an absolute bullet to the pocket. The Romack, slow start, couple of spares. He trails by 12. Pin. So often you see a player leave a leave a half ten and then come back in the same lane and leave a four pin. The slight adjustment, wanting to get the ball higher up into the pocket, maybe just too much of an adjustment. Marshall, the uh, the yellow finger grip on his finger. 
as he makes a stand, he uses the uh, the finger grip on his index finger because you, you get a lot of a lot of tension, a lot of uh, pressure. Excuse me, that's pressure is what I'm trying to say, and that keeps his finger from getting sore. There's the scoreboard. So it's Traber and Barnes on top. Romek trails by just 13. He's getting the crowd behind him, Marshall. He has. He's got command of the pocket. He's got the crowd loving it. He's got the 10 pin following this game. That's the uh, what was elusive in the early stage of the last game. Barnes to even it up. Strike here in the fourth. Generally, the players look for the ball to hook back into the pocket. This ball is coming just straight into the pocket. Playing what we call the fallback. We just don't see that very often out here on tour. Conditions don't dictate it. Romick knows he's got to get started. Traber and Barnes with both three in a row. Romick, 23 pins in the rears. That was his first strike. Traver up in the fifth frame as players look on. And not to be. Four pin. It takes a very precise release to get it into the pocket and strike. This ball coming in high. Almost trips out the four, but pin just dances right around the top of it. Barnes, a couple of fourth place finishes this year. Don Carter Classic in Dallas and also in Las Vegas. Right there. Yeah. Well, he's showing me something, Marshall. Uh, he's an intense competitor. And he's just, he's so talented. Traver makes the four pin, but Barnes now has an 11 pin advantage. And Romick says, hey, guys, wait for me. <laughs> I think it goes back to league players. You know, they bowl in a, a particular center week in, week out in the same condition. Here, varying conditions, uh, even within a tournament. Well, there are, and you have to you have to be very versatile. <laughs> Looks good. Oh, almost the 410. Just the four pin, but boy, needed that one. Unusual. It looks like it should be a solid four. The 10 pin standing there, just for a second. Romick, last year's Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award winner. And picks up the spare. But right now it is Chris Barnes throwing the high heat. Barnes leads it in the PBA National Championship. Michael Campbell, who has won a few tournaments this year, going to be a lot of fun to watch. Traver kicks it out, Marshall, and he remains in the hunt. Still down by 11 pin, but more importantly, he sets himself up in the next frame to close that margin down. Uh, this kid here, great athlete. Only bowler to make match play in all six PBA events this year, but he uh, played high school basketball, member of the 86 state championship team, point guard, also an outstanding baseball player. Took a little. Comes in light, leaves the two and the five, and mistake just got the ball too far to the right you got a friendly roll with a four looks like it's gonna go into the two pin but uh, didn't do it try. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> that's all right the ball right through the heart and a fortunate roll for Justin Romick Romick trails by 31 Barnes changes ball Makes the spare. Dale Traber now can make it a double. Let's go, Dale! You're in the seventh frame. Could take a one pin lead right here, Phil, if he strikes.
career TV record, one and one, with a 190 average for Trey. Sets it in there, Marshall, and a, a double. Barnes. Well, now let's take, took, let's take a look at what's in the bag for Chris Barnes. Strike ball is the Danger Pro HPH. The pin is five and a half inches from his axis point. There's no extra hole. It's a very strong ball with a stable layout. Rolls early and tends to set up in the pocket. That's exactly what he's looking for. And that set up in the pocket, but he left the solid seven. Terrible break for Barnes. He wasn't quite on balance. Maybe he didn't like the release, but well, he likes where the ball ended up. Can't put it in there any better. And Romick taking advantage of that shot that went right through the heart. Makes a double. Closes down the margin a little bit. Keeps himself in the match. Barnes. Boy, the bowling industry lost a couple of great individuals recently. Marshall, I know you knew Bill Hawk, proprietor at Holiday Bowl in Chattanooga, passed away. As did Don Snyder, longtime bowling writer for the L.A. Times, uh, past president of the Bowling Writers Association. Uh, certainly our heartfelt wishes and prayers to their families, friends, and co-workers. They will be sadly missed. Well, Trevor, he has three in a row and has taken the lead. Ball come in, coming in light for Traver, but he scatters them around. So Barnes, after that uh, stubborn 10 pin, trying to come back. There we go. Yeah, that back. That went all right. He's talking to the pin, says, is that all right? They ever answer? That, well, no, but that's in <laughs> reference to the solid seven he left. The spare be His previous shot, there's the solid strike. And yes, Chris, that was all right. Justin. Will he get the seven? Well, he needed it. Now, Romick not out of it, but uh, it looks as if it's boiling down to a battle between Barnes and Traber. And for Romick, uh, first telecast of the year, his last telecast, both in 1997, fourth and a fifth place finish. Up the spare. One thing uh, with Dale Traber, Marshall, as we first of all take a look at the scoreboard, Barnes trails by 12, Romick by 33, but not an open frame here through two matches for Traber in just one tournament. He keeps the ball in play. I've, uh, you know, it gets old talking about it, but that is it. Trevor with four in a row. Show your PBA loyalty by becoming a member of the PBA Fan Club. Members receive quarterly newsletters, which include the latest inside information on the PBA tours, tips, interviews with the pros, discounts on merchandise, contests. Membership $14.95 plus $3 shipping and handling. It includes a PBA decal. For more information or to join, call 1-888-440-1340. Barnes in the ninth needs this one. Must strike. <laughs> Not over yet. Barnes using a little bit of intimidation, saying it's not over yet, and directing those comments to Dale Traber. Mr. Traber's aware of the score. <laughs> Roman with a strike in the ninth, but it looks like a two-way battle, Marshall. Well, for Roman, the best that he can do is 226 right now. Barnes and Traber both working in 230s. Traber with that 12-pin lead over Barnes. Romick down by 43, and we are in the 10th frame. Come on, oh my. Putting on a clinic. Traber with a possible 269. If I'm doing my addition correctly, he needs nine pins and a spare for 258. That would shut out Chris Barnes. Barnes must strike here for any chance. Well, Barnes got it, but I'll tell you right now, Phil, the 
They're going to show up. Traver. I just Go don't crazy. see him missing a pocket. As we take a look at Chris Barnes with that fallback. Dead flush in the pocket. And he needs it, and he wants it. That's Excited. Tra Traver with a nine spare, and he's a winner. That's enough. Well, the 10-pin stance, he'll need to make that. But he won't have to make it unless Barnes strikes here. I've just really enjoyed uh, watching Chris Barnes today with a different shot. I haven't seen that fallback shot very often. The Collegiate Bowler of the Year back in 1992. Team USA for four years. Boy. What a resume. Oh, That's it. You enjoyed watching the ball. You've only got a chance to watch the ball one day to Bill Traver. He's your winner. 258 with the spare. Coming back, I'm coming back with the tip of the week. We're in Toledo, the PBA National Championship. Dale Traver moves on with a 258 into the semifinal match. Now, Marshall Holman with another score more with Brunswick tip. Proactive versus reactive. In recent weeks, we've talked about how the inside of the ball can help you build different reactions. Now let's talk about the cover stocks, the outside of the ball. Here we have a proactive ball and a reactive ball. The proactive ball has microscopic texture built into it, much like a tire. It'll grab the lane more, and it'll make a smoother transition going down the lane. The reactive ball has a smoother surface. It actually floats on the top of the oil more, allowing it to get through the front of the lane easier without having to force it. So now we've given you a lot of options that you can use and take to your local pro shop. By knowing what the core of the ball will do and the cover stock, you can build a reaction to combat the lane conditions you're going to be bowling on. Thank you, Marshall. Coming up next Sunday at 12.30, the PBA Tour concludes its winter tour in Akron, Ohio, with the prestigious Bayer Brunswick Touring Players Championship at Stonehenge Family Fund Center. Sunday, April 2nd, 5.30 start, the PBA Senior Tour's best compete in an outdoor TV Finals, with the winner receiving the keys to a brand new home worth $100,000. Coming up, our semi-final match, Dale Traver will take on Norm Duke and Jess Stayrook. The semi-final match, and again, he hasn't missed the pocket all afternoon. Marshall looks awfully strong going up against now Jess Stayrook and Norm Duke. Stayrook, this is only his second tournament. Norm Duke, he'll bowl every day. Well, Duke's... You would think Duke would be the favorite in this match, but you got to go with, uh, with Traver. He's got two games that he's already participated in. He's locked into the pocket. Now he's got the carry. He just beat Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes, 246, a bit surprised. <laughs> yeah, he, he came up here a while ago, said that was 30 pins more than he thought he could shoot. Now our first look at Jess Stayrook. Stayrook with a strike, and for Stayrook, once again, just his second tournament of the year, not because he really doesn't want to bowl, but numerous injuries, wrist, shoulder, elbow, and. This week, it uh, felt, all felt pretty good, so it came out bold near made the telecast. Traber, first shot in the semifinal match. For Dale Traber, right now, it's all about keeping his form, and he's doing it. Now for Mighty Mike Norm Duke out of Claremont, Florida. 35 years old. Will Traver be intimidated by Stay Rook and Duke? Remains to be seen. But it's a good possibility. Stay Rook, it's, it's been a while since he last appeared on television. 1998 in Tucson, where he finished fourth. And it was through the heart. Leaves the four and the seven. See the ball rolling too much of the head pin. No help to come over for the four and the seven. Miss Traber's up in the second frame looking for an early double. 
Solid four. Well, all afternoon long, it's just been either a 10-pin or a 4-pin for Traber. I mean, he's been in the pocket every shot, really wavered. And has made it now for two matches into the semifinal match. Stay rook. He makes the 4 7. Traver switching ball. Now yeah, for Traver, it just seems like league play for him. Becky Bowles in three leagues back home. Composite average, 235. It's been a fun afternoon. While well, the other players, some of the other players, are a bit frustrated. It has been uh, Traver's day up to this point. Duke with a strike, and it seems like they were quite set with that ball, Marshall. Six pin just taking out the 10 pin. Duke said he could hear a phone ringing. Uh, it's not for you, Norm. <laughs> the strikes are for you. Duke up by 10 over Stay Rook and Traber. Stay Rook taking his time. Be careful of that shot clock. Well, it's just going to be the five pin. Fortunate to get nine. Well, a lot of the players this afternoon are shaking their heads. Not Traber. Those are the pins of Jess Stay Rook. Traber up. He hit the pocket. <laughs> he really is showing a lot today. Pocket percentage, 100% for Traber. First tournament of the year, and it's a major. And he's one win away from bowling for the title. You know, we mentioned that Traber was okay as far as the shot clock's concerned, but he has been, been taking his time this week. He's been kind of a slow player. But, uh, boy, Jess, you know, it's been a while since you've been on uh, television. So you want to... Maybe, maybe you should continue to play slower. I don't know. It's, it's, it worked this week. Early in the match. Duke trying to make it three in a row. 51 wins in television. 64 career TV appearances. It did. I'm telling you, Norm Duke certainly... The most talented right-handed player on our tour. As you can see, he's got a 20-pin lead over Traber, 21 over, over Stayrook. The reason I said the most talented of right-handers is right-handers are forced to play more parts of the lane, so he has to do more, and he's practiced it more than a lot of lefties have. Trips out the, the six-pin. Traber with strike, spare, strike, but he could really use this one because Duke has three in a row. Well, you could take the 20-pin advantage Duke has and cut it in half with a strike. Solid 10. Boy, another great shot. Watch the six pin. Third from the right. It's going to go right around the bottom of the 10 pin and that is so disappointing and so frustrating for the professional bowler. He made the shot he wanted. It's only nine. Back in just the 10 pin for Duke after three strikes. Still has the early lead. Wasn't pleased with his release. Not Traver. Hard straight. Makes the 10 pin. Traber has not made a mistake today. Still finds himself 19, finds himself 19 pins behind Norm Duke. Duke known for being a great spare shooter. And picks it up. So Norm Duke has the early lead through four frames, up by 19 and 20, respectively. Back with more in a minute.
And Daryl Ducat and Sherry Gratham, co-proprietors out here at Southwick Lanes. Just a tremendous week. The PBA National Championship. Great crowds as always here in the Toledo area. Well, I bowled here for many, many years and none better than Sherry and Daryl. They do a great job. Stay rook, spare and a strike in the fifth and sixth. Traber also a spare and strike in the fifth and sixth. And now Duke with that double marshal. And it is Norm Duke. Five strikes in the first six frames. Increases his lead to 30 over both of his competitors. Stay rook working on a strike. And cut into the lead. Yeah. And Stayrook with authority on lane 47. Stayrook, six national titles and seven regional championships. Dale Traber. First time that he's really felt some heat. Uh, he finds himself down here and really could use this clutch double. Now Norm Duke's been able to knock the soft 10 down, but for Traber, it'll be no better than a spare in the seventh frame and uh, the way Duke is going, his time's running out. You can see the six pin. It does touch the 10, but not enough of it to knock it down. Duke in the seventh. That's three in a row. Boy, he looks solid right now. Saving his emotions too, Phil. Not getting too excited too early. to take on our tournament leader, Jason Couch. Traber down by 40. Stayrook down by 30. Now the winner gets a three-year exemption into the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions and a spot into the 2000 Dubai Grand Slam. We'll tell you more about the Dubai Grand Slam next week. Got a pin stuck in the channel, so we're going to have to have that removed. They should be able to do that from the back. Surprised the pin jumped out quite that far. Stay Rook doesn't mind waiting. Don't go, don't go too far, Jess. <laughs> They'll have it ready for you in a moment. <laughs> Stay Rook with a double. And so this weight, a little bit of a weight here, and he's been able to finally throw two strikes uh, back to back and down by 30. And now they've got the pin cleared. Dayrick will set himself and get ready for hopefully a strike in the eighth frame to cut that lead back down to 20. Stayrook using the uh, towel to wipe off uh, the uh, accumulated oil on the ball. Yeah, just wants, wants the ball to have a fresh, fresh, clean surface each time he throws it. Well, that's trouble. It's the two, four, seven, eight. Stayrook giving it a funny stare as. As if to say, well, what happened? Traber up in the eighth frame. He's down by 40. Best Traber can shoot is 229. There the 10 pin responds. Great trajectory of Dale Traber. Stayrook on the left side of the lane likes to hook the ball, although throwing the ball straighter than uh, the Stayrook of old. It is. He chops the two and the eights straight off. What happened on the that four shot? seven? Well, he got way too much of the two pin. Needed to put the ball in between the two and the four. And it's just like a ball going through the nose. It came in high on that spare. And now for Duke, they're making his job a little easier. In the eighth frame for Duke. Trying to win for the second time this year. Just poetry in motion for Norm Duke. Take a look at the footwork. Shoulder high backswing. Look at the balance. Boy, I tell you, it's just, it's, that is really what you're looking for, that balance of the line. Seven pin for Stayrook. And uh, Duke right now working at a 249 pace. 
Traber must strike here in the ninth frame and then have some big help from Duke if he expects to go on to the title match. That's the second time he's come in high and missed the pocket. He missed the pocket while we're away in commercial. Lanes are changing. Stay the oil is being taken from the front of the lane and being carried down to the back end. Well, Norm Duke will move on to take on Jason Couch, and I think he wants another shot at Jason. Well, Duke had the lead throughout the last day of match play until the 10th frame when Couch struck out and overtook that first, first place position. Now Duke's got everything going for him. He's making great shots, and he's getting some breaks. The four pin falls, and it looks like it's going to be the nine pin, and then I don't think so. <laughs> Stay with finishing out. Norm Duke, the winner of the semifinal match. Duke now going to be shooting for the PBA National Championship, going up against Jason Couch. It's the PBA National Championship here in Toledo. Dale Traber won the first couple of matches. And then it was Norm Duke with that big 278. Duke moves on to the title match. Well, let's take a look at some of the other finishers this week, Phil. And missing by just one pin, Parker Bone III, the 1999 PBA Player of the Year. He went into the last match a pin ahead. Eric Forkel eclipsed that margin, sent him home. In 17th place, Walter Ray Williams Jr., five-time PBA Player of the Year, coming off a knee injury, but looking strong again. Now there's Mark Roth, the great Mark Roth, owner of 34 titles. He's getting ready for the senior tour in another year. And Paul Fleming, the 1999 Rookie of the Year, finishing 26. He'd like to show a little better next week at the Touring Player Championships. We're ready for the championship match. Norm Duke, he's won a couple of majors. Jason Couch, he's won the PBA's last major. Trying to make it back-to-back -back wins in major championships. This should be fun. Advantage Duke, both by the uh, fact that he's had the game. He just shot 278 in, and uh, Jason's been watching. So, see how he handles himself early in the match. You know, they could have done this at home. They both live in Claremont, Florida. But they'd rather be here in Toledo. And Duke using what I call the soft hand. What I mean by that is he's not doing a lot of work with the hand action. Let's the ball just roll off his hand very smoothly. Let's the ball do the work in the back end of the lane. There's a six just nudging out the 10 pin. Thank you. I think he said thank you. I think he's come to expect all 10 to fall when he throws the ball, Phil. Second frame, both players with strikes in the opening. Yeah! Boy, would have loved to put the early pressure on Couch. Leaves a solid 10. Six pin going around the bottom of the 10 pin. We've seen it so much. Seen a lot today. Duke, one of the few players that does not switch balls when he shoots spares. But he has the ability to roll up the back of the ball and make it go extremely straight. Just like that. Strike spare for Duke. Couch up in the second frame, and really this is uh, Jason's third uh, consecutive major that he's bowling for the championship. And he's going at it a little different than the other two left-handers. He's in a little bit deeper on the lane.
information regarding the PBA Summer Tour. Drew Carey's appearance at next week's Mayor of Brunswick Kirk. Touring Players Championship. And a recap of today's PBA National Championship and links to some of the hottest websites in bowling. All that and more at PBATour.com. Jason Couch with uh, the early double and asking for a re-rack. Didn't like the way the pins were setting. I'm sure he was looking at the one and the two pin. The margin between them might have been a little too wide or maybe a little too narrow. You're allowed how many a game? You can have two a game. It must be your first order of business. Or else you will not be granted the re-rack. Couch on making three in a row. Kind of surprising, guys. In the opening, I said the couch would be tough, but after watching Duke shoot 278, see that great action on the seven pin, knocking it out. Action, reaction. Duke in the third. <laughs> Same shot he threw last time on 48. This time, the six pin lays in the channel, does not pop back out to get the 10. Lanes do change, game to game. Especially under the television lights. People are saying, boy, he just shot 278. Here he goes striking a couple of spares. Yeah, but they've been quality shots, both 10 pins. And no problem taking the spare. That's about all I can afford. Uh, Duke. And that one, uh, back backhands, he was able to bring it in a little bit. Well, he's made... Four shots, two on each lane, and they've all been carbon copies. The only difference is that flat 10 stood one time on the right-hand lane, and the ringing pen 10 stood on lane 47 in the second. Well, Jason loves the top seat of position you mentioned at the top of the show. He's won five of his titles, five of seven from that top-seated spot. Chance to increase the lead from 21 to 31. And something distracted him. It looks as if he was looking looking back. I back into the crowd. Ten TV appearances last year. Second only to Parker Bones. Eleven, of course, Parker, the player of the year. High backswing of Jason Couch and looked fine there, but the ball, it's going to creep in high. And there's the six, the seven, and the ten. And oh, he's hooking at it. He gets just nine. Going to it right back in the match. Well, we're going to have to find out how this frame will affect Jason Couch as this title match unfolds. Distracted. Well, you, you have to put it behind you. Whatever, whatever it was, it's uh, it's over. His 21 pin lead is now down to six. Jason up in the fifth frame, 1992 PBA Rookie of the Year, ranked uh, second by the PBA. liked it, Marshall. Well, back in the pocket. Leaves just the 10 pin. You'll watch the 5 pin. It's going to go in front. Actually just stops just short and in front of the 10 pin. Not not be able to knock it over. You know, it's only fitting that Duke and, and Couch would be bowling for the title. They both averaged 232. There was 17 one hundredths of a pin difference for 64 games between these two competitors. So they dominated. And they're bowling for all the money now. 64 games this week here in the Major Championship, 48 match play games. Duke, now with new life, coming up in the fifth frame. Can take the lead. There's no 10 pin there, flush in the pocket. So Duke with a double, now leads by four. He won a couple of weeks ago. Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic in Dallas finished seventh in Chattanooga. 
Four pin lead for Duke midway through the championship match. It's a frustrating game. Just came off his hands so clean. Six pin around the bottom of the ten pin, and he just know he thought he's, he he thought that was going to strike. <laughs> going to win today. Norm would uh, move into ninth on the all-time career earnings list. He would pass Mark Roth, who has won 34 titles. Duke. No problem with that spare. Tight match here. Here in Toledo. And due to time, uh, bowling through the commercial, Jason Couch came right back with a double. Now Norm Duke up in the seventh. Wow, that ball looked left off of Duke's hand. It held the pocket. You know, and really is seeing, seeing a lot of maturity from Jason Couch as he threw that wide open split in the fourth frame and came right back, settled himself down, hit the pocket in the fifth, and then strikes in the sixth and seventh. The release of Norm Duke. Very smooth, well balanced, right on line. Duke up in the eighth frame. He trails by seven. Can get the lead right back with the strike here. Oh, yeah. Classic championship match Duke and Couch. Norm Duke with that straight trajectory around the third arrow. Ball is flush in the pocket. Everything just falling immediately. Emphatically loving it. Now Jason on the double. Up in the eighth frame. And again. Found him as best I can. He threw a split in the fourth. Now, you know, and I, I, best I can. you can hear him say he's throwing it the best he can. Just did not project the ball far enough to the left. Ball checked up very early. He'll go hard and straight. Try and bounce it out. He's close. And Marshall now, another open in the eighth frame. See Couch throwing it so hard, trying to bounce something out, and the pins react a little bit, but uh, not able to knock back into the four pin. Couch down by 18. And he'll finish the game on that tough lane. Yeah, that's the lane he chose to finish on. Best Couch can do, 220. Duke right now working at a 218 pace. Solid seven. First switch balls go hard and straight at the seventh pin. Duke sitting on the bench, liking his chances more and more with every frame. Duke will just need to fill the frames, the ninth and tenth. Josh picks up the spare for the tournament later. In trouble. Norm Duke coming up now in the ninth and tenth frames of the championship match. Duke uh, trying to win for the second time here in the year 2000. 18 pin advantage. Can really slam the door with a strike here in the ninth frame. Another time. And he was distracted. Well, it is a little bit different feeling. During the week, Marshall, and you've bowled many telecasts, and you've been distracted once or twice. A little bit different. Well, it doesn't take a lot to distract me, Phil, but thanks for mentioning it. Uh, it's, uh, it, it is. It is. It's very quiet. Uh, when Jason picked up that seven pin, the pin came out into the into the channel. That'll have to be removed before... That puts Duke at a 228 pace. They're going to have to clear that pin on lane 47. In fact, Duke's going to clear it himself. He's going to just throw the ball down there. We see a replay. 10 pin, the last one to go. Well, 
Duke trying to win his 18th title, uh, but more important, another major. PBA National. He'll be uh, two-thirds away there. He won the 94 Tournament of Champions. Wins today, wins the PBA National, and what's left is the U.S. Open. Jason Couch certainly disappointed. Two shots on the right-hand lane, his undoing. He leaves the 4-6, but uh, he's got enough. Just enough. Because the best that Jason Couch can do is 210. And Norm Duke is the winner. Wow. That'll do it. It's kind of a funny way to win it, leaving a 4-6 in the 10th frame. But 214, Phil. Best that Jason Couch can do is 210. Big win for that man, Norm Duke. Couch led the tournament. He's going to have to settle for second place here in Toledo. Norm Duke with a 2-14, and he is the winner here in the PBA National Championship. Back to talk to him in a minute. Here at Southwick Lanes in Toledo, your winner, Norm Duke. 14 to 198, the PBA National Championship. Let me throw it up to my partner, Marshall Holmes. Well, now let's take a look back at today's key moment, Ginkoba moment of concentration. And for Norm Duke, it was the ninth frame of the title match. He had the concentration to get up there and make the strike, virtually locking up the match. That was his key moment, and that's today's Ginkoba moment of concentration. Think better, think Ginkoba. Phil, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. Norm Duke, the winner, here to present the Eddie Elias Trophy as the commissioner of the Professional Bowlers Association, Mark Gerbrick. On behalf of Eddie Elias' family and the 2,800 PBA members, congratulations on winning your 18th title. Thank you, Mark. All righty, beautiful-looking trophy. Now Daryl Dukak, co-proprietor here at Southwick Lanes. We've been coming to Toledo for some 20 years, Daryl, with the PBA National Championship. Norm Duke winning it in the year 2000. That's a long time to come. Congratulations, Norm. You worked hard. It was one of the toughest conditions I've seen in 20 years, and you deserve to win. On behalf of uh, Sherry and me, we wish you all luck in the world on your new bowling alley. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Dale. Norm, give me this one. <laughs> I would like to thank Daryl Ducat and everybody here at South Southwick Lanes, all the volunteers and the fans. You guys are great all week. Special thanks to AMF for the equipment and Jason Couch. He bowled incredible all week long. Norm, very tough condition. That's the way it should be for a major championship. Well, that's what we asked for. And to tell you the truth, I had a better look today on the TV pair than I had all week long. And that was relieving for me. And I know that Jason had his troubles. Uh, that's the way it is. Congratulations, 18 titles. But you're two-thirds the way there. Still need that U.S. Open. Well, that's this year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific year for Norm. He has now won twice here in the year. 2000 norm duke the winner of the pba national championship next week please join us as we head to akron ohio stone edge family fun center where we will conclude the winner's swing of the pba tour catch all the action on espn at 12 30 noon eastern time this has been a presentation of espn the worldwide leader in sports for more log on to espn.com part of the go network Go.com. For my partner, Marshall Holman, Phil Ferguson saying so long from the Glass City, Toledo. Norm Duke, your winner. <laughs>